for you. you. I do this for us. Trust. It I'd be for you. First, I'm gonna be going with my weaving cap. And I'm gonna go in with my polyester thread and some pins to help secure my hair in place. As you can see, I'm wearing the cap on my head. Next, I'm gonna also use my NYX white eyeliner and I'm gonna place the frontal on my head. And this is like my tip on how to place your frontal the right way. Basically, you wanna part wherever your ear meets with the frontal and then use your white eyeliner to mark it on the cap. And then you wanna do the same thing for the back. Wherever the frontal ends, you wanna mark that part. And then you wanna place it and make sure the paintings all match each other and then this is what the front of the frontal should look like before you start sewing and when i start sewing my frontal i usually start from the middle and i work my way to the side and then i go again and work from the middle all the way down to the other side and you can see when i'm sewing i usually do my first three stitches are usually triple knotted just to make sure it's secure and tight and it's not going to get loose it's just like my caution mechanism so you can do that if you want to or you can just do it once and then be done with it and you can see how i've aligned the eyeliner and the frontal together and i'm going to sew it down so when i wear it on my my head it's going to fit properly i learned this stuff from sophiology Now I'm gonna double weft my bundles and I'm gonna pin them down first towards the end of the cap so I make sure I don't have that much cap space showing. Then I'm gonna sew, it's almost like a smiley face, you're sewing around all the way to the frontal. So you wanna make sure you pin it down first. I think this step is very helpful if you're a beginner. And I'm gonna just start sewing it down and I'm gonna do another um, three stitches of triple knotting the thread just to make sure it's like knotted up and tight make sure it doesn't unravel easily then i'm going to start going back to my regular one stitch sewing if you don't understand what i'm talking about you can watch my other video on how i make my lace closure i talked about it more in detail in that video as you can see i'm doing the triple knots on the needle and then i do that and i sew it in Before I do the photo for my thread, I always make sure I triple knot each stitch and then I fold it over and I pin it down and I continue sewing in the same motion. You don't want to keep sewing in a circular motion because I mean we didn't really sew in a circular motion, it just looks like we sewed in a circular motion because the frontal and the bundle are attached to each other in a way. But you want to just keep folding over or if you like to cut your tracks, you can cut your tracks but I like to fold my track, um, my bundles over because it's easier for me because I decided I want to reuse the bundle for something else. I can just loosen it up and I have my full bundle intact. As you guys can see, when I replace my thread, I also do the same thing. I also like make sure I triple knot. Make sure whenever you're changing the thread or you're folding over, make sure you triple knot. When you're about to finish the stitch, like you're done with the whole wig, make sure you triple knot. When you're starting the wig, triple knot. Like triple knot it. Triple knot it, baby. It's going to secure it when you're brushing it hardcore, when you do all that hard mechanisms to the hair. Yes, I said mechanisms. Just make sure you triple knot it. Triple knot it is the way to go. So as you can see, I'm in the front right now and it's already being single wefted or yeah, you get what I'm saying. I didn't fold it. I didn't fold it over twice. So I'm just taking my time to make sure I secure it and cover as much of the cap space as I can. There's not much difference between sewing a front a, la a lace closure and a frontal because the only thing that really makes them different is the frontal and the lace closure. Not the same way of sewing the bundles to the cap is, is the exact same way you sew it. It's just the beginning steps are a little bit different, but there's not that much 
difference to them in my opinion. Now I'm just cutting off the excess cap that covers the lace frontal so that you guys can, cause you don't want that part showing cause it's gonna make your hair look unrealistic. Like why is it black? You know what I mean? You gotta cut that off, but make sure when you cut it, you don't cut too close to where your stitches are cause you can literally unravel everything and you're gonna be crying cause I cried. Now to protect my canvas head, I'm gonna put in a plastic bag before I start coloring the hair because I just want my canvas head to stay as natural and looking good. To protect my lace frontal, I'm gonna be adding some Vaseline. You can also use a got to be glue. This is to prevent the hair color or hair dye from staining the lace and you can keep your lace looking as fresh as possible. Make sure you're careful not to apply too much. I did apply too much Vaseline, but I made it work at the end. So the colors I'm gonna be using is the Arctic Fox Girls Night, which is like the lavender color and then Arctic Fox um, Purple Rain and you need some gloves, baby. I'm going in with Arctic Fox Purple Rain into my mixing bowl. I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can. This thing is like really hard to squeeze out. I'm going to mix it in with my Tresemme conditioner. It's best to use a white conditioner if you want to like make the color a little bit lighter because I feel like the purple one was kind of too dark. Now with the lavender one, for this one, it's really light. So adding the conditioner to it was like a bad move that I did, but it's like I had to learn from it because it's my first time like actually putting color to the hair like i don't know like my second time applying color like this to the hair so and when you're applying the color make sure you apply it everywhere you want to make sure you get every strand of the hair like use your finger to brush it in to massage the color into the hair you want to make sure you get the back of the bundle because it's easy to see the front of the bundle and think oh my god i have enough color no make sure you lift that bundle up and you look to make sure the back also has enough coloring into it because when you're done coloring if everywhere is not saturated with the color you're going to regret it trust me i learned this the hard way make sure you look at front and back make sure everywhere has the color evenly you can see to create the ombre effect i'm taking my brush up a little bit and i'm also using my fingers to massage the colors in and you want to make sure you take your time with this because this, this is not easy. It's not easy at all. As you can see, before I go with each section of the hair, I also protect the hair with um, foil paper because I have two different colors on the hair. If it was one color, it wouldn't matter. Now I'm going on with the Iron Brights in the lavender shade. You can see that this is what I used to help make the lavender color more vibrant or to my satisfaction because at first it looked like I barely applied any color when I washed it out the first time. So I had to go over every part I already colored and add, mix that into the original Girls' Night lavender color from Arctic Fox. And it gave me the exact shade I needed to have. When you get to the frontal part, you want to make sure you're careful with this. Yes, you did protect the lace, but you want to make sure you're careful and not get too heavy-handed because that can also ruin the lace. Like, So be careful when you get to the front and take your time because there's no reason to rush. I did decide to apply the lavender color first to the top of every strand of the bundle and then I worked it with a dark color first. I got tired, like I was trying to find the easiest way to get done. So I just said, okay, we just do lavender first and then we work into the dark color. So this is the hair after I washed it the first time. I'm gonna also show you guys the shampoo and conditioner I recommend using if you're going to be washing colored hair to preserve your colors. But when I washed it, there were some parts of the hair that didn't like take to the color as much as I wanted it to. So I went in with like a mascara spoolie just to apply some color and also use my brush to apply some more of the lavender color to get it the way I wanted it to look. And then I was going to apply my olive oil um, heat protectant before I start yeah, blow drying my hair. This hair gave me stress 
when I say stress, they gave me stress. I'm gonna brush the hair a little bit up and comb it before I start straightening it. I'm just in love with how everything ended up like in the process and they say trust the process girl trust the process because i was freaking out i thought i ruined this whole hair but it came out to the to, at the end it came out the way i wanted it to be so now to install the wig i'm just showing you gotta get your wig cap and i'm gonna get my got to be glue the anti-freezing spray and i'm gonna spray that all over my forehead it's just to protect my hair from when i actually applied the glue i'm just gonna blow dry that in and let that just stick to my forehead and i'm also doing that on low heat i'm gonna cut the excess cap off be careful with this too because the you don't want to cut your ear or cut any important thing that's important to you basically I decided to give myself a middle part and I didn't really like take my time to do this. I just wanted to do something like basically last minute. Spray some water on it to just to help put it down. I'm gonna tweeze it a little bit to try and make the part as neat as I can. But I'm not really, I said I'm gonna like work on this wig off camera more because it's like, there's it needs a little bit of tweaking and I need to be seeing it on the canvas head when I'm tweaking it so to cut the excess lace I'm gonna measure where my ear meets the lace frontal and I'm gonna cut from that area and just cut that excess lace off so that when I apply the wig and glue it down it sits perfectly and that so I don't have excess thing like covering my ear because the lace is not meant to cover your ear then I'm just cutting the rest of the excess lace off and when I'm cutting I'm not cutting in a straight line I'm cutting in like in a zigzag motion like just to make sure it fits my hairline shape now I'm going to go with my got to be glue as the glue I wanted to use to to apply this wig, which is a big mistake. And also I also have foundation on. So like you want to make sure your skin is clear and clean before you apply your wig when you're gluing it down. Because when there's makeup or any other thing residue on your face, like it's not going to be as nice as it, as it would be if your skin was clear and bare on its own. So yeah, when you're using glue i recommend any type of glue but not the got to be glue and definitely make sure you're doing this like when you don't have makeup on if you're gonna do it with makeup on make sure you have as little as no makeup on your forehead to make the part look a little bit natural i'm going with my foundation i'm just putting that foundation on the pout and the part just to make it look nice and there you have it hey beautiful i know what you need my african queen take you to my lobby this song is for you